Ola Sombrero Time instructors, we are on Unit 6. This is for Spanish 1, Week 3. Now we're moving into El Comedor. So, what we're going to be talking about is Cómo ponemos la mesa. La servilleta, el vaso, el plato, el tenedor. How are we going to set the table and all the vocabulary going around? that. Now the dialogue is very fun. Now we're trying to teach some manners around the language. So I want you to really have the kids be expressive here. You're going to teach them this dialogue and then you're going to pull up students and change the thing that you're asking for. Okay? So when they memorize the dialogue the first time it's going to be la servilleta. But what you want to do is bring out el tenedor, el cuchillo, whatever you have. Now bring some stuff with you to class. Bring some plastic, um, you know, silverware or some real silverware to show us examples. All right? Now, what you're going to do on the first day is we're going to be talking about la izquierda y la derecha. Now this is to set the table. So when you actually do the activity on day one, you're going to build out the whole play setting on a piece of construction paper and I want you to be using that a la izquierda, a la derecha. But before they do that, before you give them those instructions, really have them play with that. Agarres la oreja a la derecha, a la izquierda, la mano derecha. Play with it with their body so they have a lot of experience so that when you say that command, they don't have to think about it. They know it's this way or that way. All right. So, on the first day, you're going to do page 51 of Las Oraciones Completas. Check out, la leche es blanco. No tiene la N, so you got to insert that in. You should just cross out the whole word and put blanca. Because that's where the correction is anyway. Make sure that you're reading this aloud. Now, this is not supposed to be a 15-minute activity, guys. Work through this quickly. If you have to do it small group, don't let your kids struggle a lot here. Masculine and feminine is very difficult. It's something we'll work on forever. So keep moving along. Don't let them struggle a ton. Tell them there's one thing they got to look for. Build out the sentence. Make it obvious and have them repeating, repeating, repeating. Make sure, remember, you're speaking 40% of the time. And how much are they speaking? 60. Get those kids talking. We want to build confidence articulation, and then vocabulary development. Because if you don't have confident kids, they're not going to be speaking any Spanish no matter what they know. All right. So, I talk about the dialogue. So, mamá, pásame la servilleta. Y la mamá no le responde. Mamá, dame la servilleta. Sé amable, dice la mamá. Mamá, me gustaría la servilleta, por favor. Have fun with this. Aquí la tienes. Now, we're going to be talking about la y lo. Now, this is not a huge grammar lesson. This is just something that if it's el tenedor, aquí lo tienes. If it's la servilleta, aquí la tienes. Okay? That's all we're going to do. We're not making a big deal. But right, el tenedor equals lo. La servilleta equals la. Okay? There we go. Now, on day one, we're going to build out that um, play setting like I told you. Okay, now on to day two. Do that opening time. Review that adject um, adjectives and target vocabulary. Ask your calendar questions. How are you going to get that 60-40 split? You can have your kids repeating the questions to each other and then the kids repeating what they actually said. No English. This is an immersion program. No translation, girls. You know better. Do not have your kids translating. We don't want them to translate in their mind when they get in the real world. Functional language, you know, multilingual people do not translate in their mind while they're trying to have a conversation. It delays the process. So don't train your kids to do it. Don't encourage it. Don't ask for it. ¿Qué es esto? How is a kid supposed to respond to that question but to translate it? 
Don't do that. Don't do that. Okay. Enough of that. How do we get them to show us that they understand what we're talking about? They can draw it. They can act it out. And if you want to ask a question, make sure that you know they have the vocabulary to respond in Spanish. And if they respond in English, direct them back in. I saw Salu do a great job of that. She was asking a question, ¿Dónde te pones tu, uh, ¿dónde pones la mole, mochila? Yeah, where do you put your backpack? And the kid goes, well, I put it by, and she said, ah, ¿Cuál cuarto pones tu mochila? La sala, la cocina. Because the reality is this is functional language. If they were going out into the real world and they had five words to describe the places in the house, they're going to have to use those, one of those five words. So that's what we want to train them to do in class. Do not translate for them and do not ask them questions that they can't answer in the Spanish that you know that they have. Okay, so enough of that. I'm off my bandwagon. Day two, you're also going to be doing oraciones completas, the second one. So that is on page 57. Okay, this is where we're building out comer. You might want to skip that part until you get into this a little bit more. But have them work on this. Los plato es blanca. Wow, there's lots of errors there. So you can have them write, pick, pick what they want to do. Los platos son blancos. El plato es blanco. They can do either. If they go down either road and they get it right, encourage them, praise them that they got the pattern. All right, the relay race. We're really trying to work on pasame, pasame, pasame. This is something that they should be taking home. Encourage them as they walk out the door. Pásame el, uh, el lápiz or pásame tu papel. Give them something they have to give to you as their ticket out the door. That would be a great formative assessment as they walk out the door on day two. Day three, opening calendar. Dictation of the thematic vocabulary. This is a great pronunciation activity. El tenedor. Can you please work on those soft Ds? We don't want to be producing kids. Puedo, puedo. Oh, this drives me bananas. Tenedor. No, tenedor. The only way they're going to get it is if somebody practices with them. So practice that soft D. It's almost like a TH. Okay. Say it over and over. Have them say it over and over. And then do your dictation. All right. Switch up that um, dialogue, bring your kids to the front of the classroom, but get them different things that come from the play setting to interject into the dialogue. Also, bring new people from the family. We've studied the family already, so they know. Papa, mama, abuelita, abuelito. Then we're going to work on the decoding book. There's a lot in this week. It's a big week. So remember to really chart your time well. Know what you're going to do. There's not a lot of downtime this week. You're going to read this. Then you're going to have them read it. Choral reading. And then you go into the time and have them chart out the time. Then they're going to draw a picture. You read it. They read it. Read it together. Read it three times. All right, so do a couple pages of that. And then you're going to have the kids sit in a circle on the vocabulary development of day three. And you give each, or you have a paper sack that you're um, passing around. You don't have to give each one a paper sack because that gets to be a lot. Put that in the... So what you want to do is have the kids talk about the food. So this is a little bit of a review of the food. And then you want them to talk about yo como la manzana. Cuando comemos la manzana, yo uso un cuchillo. You could talk about that too, bring in that vocabulary. But go ahead and take a look at that game. It looks like a fun one. Okay, then on day four, I give you the rest of the day. 
do your opening, do your calendar, work on comer. Yo como, tú comes, él come. Work on conjugating the verb comer because then you're going to do that worksheet. And then you want to go back to the dialogue. Now bring more kids up to actually act it out. This is a super fun dialogue that's super practical for them to take home with them. And then finish your um, hora de comer worksheet. Okay? So if you have any questions, a lot of these games you're going to have to work with within the confines of your setting. So be creative, but remember the whole point is to develop, con develop confidence, build articulation, and develop their vocabulary. So remember that's your focus with no translation, staying in Spanish. All right, hasta luego.